Another very common pattern of probabilities is called the Poisson distribution. After the French mathematician Poisson, which of course means Mr. Fish. And this applies when you have events happening at a fairly steady rate, but not totally regularly. So for example, suppose you were standing by the roadside counting cars going past. One minute you might get nine cars, another minute 13, another minute 11, and so on. The average may be 10, 10 per minute at a particular time of day. But you don't actually get 10 exactly in every minute. You've got this randomness, but with a fixed mean. And that's in terms of time. You can also get this effect in terms of space. Suppose you are counting daisies in a field. And you might look at one square metre of a field and find three daisies. Another square metre nearby has five. Another one doesn't have any. And it might be that the average number of daisies per square metre of the field is four. But any particular square metre could have anything from naught up to ten, whatever. So again, there's a fixed mean, but the actual numbers vary around it. And that's what the Poisson distribution is all about. And the idea is that we have the mean, which is usually called lambda, the Greek letter lambda. Now given that mean, the probability of x events is given by this formula e to the minus lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial, where e is the mathematical constant. It's about 2.718, so it's a, it's a bit like pi. It's a fixed number that's used a lot in maths, uh, and certainly it occurs here. So we have to work out e to the power of minus lambda, then lambda to the power of however many events we want, divided by x factorial. Let's have a look at an example. Suppose we're in a call centre. Suppose calls arrive at two per minute on average. And obviously I'm interested in how many staff I need to employ at the call centre to make sure I can, I can deal with all the calls. What's the probability of less than three calls in one minute? Well, first of all, we have to think what does less than three mean? Calls can only be in whole numbers. You either get no call or one call or two calls. So it's the probability of no calls or, which is plus, the probability of one call, or the probability of two calls. They are the only options for getting less than three calls in one minute. So for each of these now, I can use this formula. For no calls, x is zero. I want x events, an event here is a call. So I want none of those, and my mean is two. So it's e to the minus two. 2 to the 0 over 0 factorial. Then I want one call. Well, this is still e to the minus 2. Then it's 2 to the 1 over 1 factorial. And then I want two calls. So it's e to the minus 2, 2 squared over 2 factorial. And one way of simplifying the arithmetic is to take out a common factor of e to the minus 2. 2 to the naught, anything to the naught is 1. Naught factorial is also defined as 1. So this is just a 1. Taking out this factor, I'm left with 2 over 1, which is 2. 2 squared, 4, over 2 factorial is also equal to 2. So I end up with 5 times e to the minus 2, and if I look that up, I get 0.6765.
that's the chance of getting two or fewer calls. So if I wanted to know what's the chance of three or more, so the probability of three or more calls would be one minus point six seven six five, which is naught point three two three five. There's a 32% chance that in any particular minute I will get three or more calls. So if I only had two receptionists on duty, then there's going to be a 30 odd percent chance that they won't be able to cope. It's easy to scale a Poisson up if I wanted to think about what's happening in five minute intervals, then the mean would become 10 and then I could do the whole Poisson uh, calculation with lambda equals 10 and so on. So it adjusts very easily. Once you know what the mean is for one unit of time or unit of space, you can scale it up and then just carry on as before. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.